and the third language, Jesus m i t e m b a e So I will try to communicate to you in both languages, English and Burmese. Amen. So I really thank the Lord for this time. Uh, just right after worship, h o i s i m asked you guys whether you are excited for next school year. How many of you are excited? Just half the hands goes up. It's okay. I understand. Like when I was in high school, I feel like I can never finish high school. Like school years never end. Do you have that feeling? But now I look back. I graduated from high school. Look how many years? Like 30 years ago. Wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so one day it's gonna be over. Amen. Kona. อ่าจองซาเตดอมเมดีนี่ด้วยบลาวไส้ลุชาตะเลลุมีระกาตะวัดหลอกเวละถองจ่าเรเนาะจมานาเลเดลุกะลีบัวรงวะเลจองเตด
God is a master peacemaker. So when God says you are his workmanship, that means you are the product of his handiwork. Amen? Amen? That means you are precious, you are unique, and you are perfect. Hallelujah. พระยาตะกินลุ่ดได้อย่าได้ก็ก้าวเนี่ยสวยจมารุตีเดกบ่าวอุสามาพระยาผันซินเนี่ยก็ก้าวเนี่ยก้าวเนี่ยอลุงก
And they have to overcome some of the fear of men or nervous, nervousness, you know, stage fright or whatever it is. So at the same time, just because you fail to do something in the first time doesn't mean that you will never be good at that. So check with God. Amen? So uh, let me encourage you. When you go to school, ask the Lord, Lord, give me wisdom. Whenever I choose my major, sometimes you have elective already in high school. We don't have that in Myanmar. We have to take all the classes that it offer. <laughs> all right. Whether we like it or not, we take all classes. So ask the Lord and then choose it accordingly. Ask the Lord for His direction. We talk about the Holy Spirit being our helper. He want to help you in your classroom. Consult with Him. Lord, lead me. Give me, lead me to the right teacher who will know how to teach with my learning style. Amen. Some teachers are very good for some kind of student. Some teachers are not so good. Like my daughter's experience, uh, she was, it was first time for her to study chemistry. But she doesn't understand how her teacher taught her. She was very good in chemistry. She was a very gentle speaking person. Sometimes she couldn't really hear her. And then she never repeat herself. When she missed a sentence, she, she doesn't know. And then when she went to another teacher who teach chemistry, when that teacher explained it to her, she understand it. But the thing is, she doesn't have all the time to go to that other teacher to help her. So, it, had she started with the other teacher, she would be, it would be very easy for her to study chemistry. But now I hear all the time, I don't, do, I don't know how to do this. And she was texting her friend, hey, how do you solve this thing? So, she was asking help from other friends. So, the same way, you can ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, give me the right teacher. Amen? Give me the right kind of friends who can help me as I study. And for those of you who are working in other places, ask the Lord for the right direction. Amen? Okay? So, ဖြားသကင်ကျွန်မတို့အတွက်ကောင်းသောအမှုတွေပြင်ဆင်ပြီးသားဖြစ်တယ်ကျောင်းသောရဲ့ခါမှာလဲဝိညာဏ်တော်
one who agree with this saying that not all high school graduates should go to the university, not necessarily so. For some people, having them go to a vocational training school helps them better. Like if they're already struggling with their composition skill in high school, they're not gonna very much succeed in college, in high school, I mean in university setting. So it's better for them to go to a specific training school that they are good at. Let's say if they like building, they're going to go to those schools or like electrical wiring stuff. These are legit. It used to be like that in America too. Somehow they popularized university degree. And that's what they said. Actually, when they graduate and then when they go to the work field, people don't really use what they learn. They use, let's say, or let's say like 20 to 30% of what they study in university to do the job that they do. So actually, they overlearn. So I'm not discouraging you not to go to college. At least get a, an associate degree. Nowadays, I know that there are less and less uh, vocational schools but there are people who are advocating for that. So whenever you have the opportunity to study, I would say go for it. You may not really like learning, at least try your best, amen? If you are struggling, let me tell you, do some goal setting. There is a saying I really like, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a small step. So when you are overwhelmed with a lot of things to do, the best thing is, to divide those assignments into different segments and then do it little by little. For example, if I cook a whole elephant for you, for let's say for them, eh, this is your food. She cannot eat that in one day, right? She will begin by eating the ear. And I'm, I'm, no, she's not gonna eat that. <laughs> and then, you know, little chop it little by little one. And then a month later, the whole leg is gone. <laughs> the next month, another leg is gone, right? That's how you can do. So if, how many classes do you have? In a month, do some goal setting and planning. How many assignments do you have for one month? And then you can assign each day, I'm gonna do this, this. I know that you're not gonna study every night, I already know. So don't set up goal unrealistically. For example, Saturday and Sunday, make it free, right? Don't do anything on Saturday and Sunday about studying. You can plan from Monday to Friday. For example, let me, give you a job, like a homework right now to do it on the, in the class. Let's say you have a thousand chairs that you have to move from this corner to this corner. How many chairs do you have to move? And then you have one year to do it. How many days are there in a year? 365 days or 66 days. So how many chairs per day do you have to move it? Only three, right? When you think, oh, a thousand chair, when you look at all your school schedule, have you picked up your schedule? This is so much work. And then the first day of school, the teacher started talking, this is your assignment, we're gonna go over this section, and then it's so much, and you go to another class, at the end of the day, you, you feel like giving up. But think about it this way, like I have a thousand chairs to move. How many days do I have? How many days, like a year or nine months, and they just, can I move three chairs every day? It's okay. Like, if you don't want to work on Saturday and Sunday, you have to add more chair in other days that you work. Or you can do, I'm going to move five chairs a day, so you don't have to work every single day in that year. That's how you can cut your job into little pieces. Amen? So, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say. เปลี่ยนนี่ตะปุ๋ยจีเลยจมารุเนี่ยมาลุมิวเดอร์สินเนจาเลตินมะคันยาเปลี่ยนนี่รู้อ่าปั้นไหนตั้มมาเดอสว
ตะยะต้องคุณเลยชื่อตัวน่ะเนี่ยปีๆแล้วจมารุเซนไซน์ลุ่ดะลุ่ดะเลยตัวน่ะဖြစ်တယ်เซนตะกองลงซ้าปุ
ตีอยู่เนี่ยพวกผิดเด้อเอเมนปิ่นจมะตีอยู่ชินเนี่ยอย่าได้ชื่อเด้อตะคูบิกูจมะตีอยู่ชินเนี่ยอย่าได้ช
ไปจ้าดีเนติตุสาต้องเปลี่ยนเนาะเนี่ยใส่โซเลยเนาะตะจ้าหาริสิเตเนจีลาတော့ปะเปลี่ยนไปยะเลยแลงกวีจแพร่
spend this money for food. No, it's not like that. So that means you can save. Don't just spend, spend, spend. All says, but save some money. You need to know how to manage your money. If you know, if you have $50 income every month, if you save, like you give tithe, you give offering, you help people, you spend some. Out of 50, let's say you save $5. That is a great start. Let's say $5 is in the offering. You have $30 to spend a month. Don't spend all 50. Sometimes you pay your tithe. Don't, don't spend all 45. This is our Burmese culture. Even among um, ministers, this is the trend that I see. We like to show off a lot. That's Burmese culture. You know, when I went to Hakka, I don't know. I know the man has a little bit of Hakka blood. This is what they said. Uh, among the, Burm uh, the Chin people, uh, the, the Hakka tribe are the closest to Burmese. This is what they mean. Like when you go to Hakka, Hakka lady, they, wear, they dress so nicely. They have pretty makeup. But when you go to their house, there's nothing. Like Burmese home. They show up everything they have. They buy gold. They buy all nicest clothes. They may be just eating tamen wing a pee. But they want to show up. That's Burmese culture. Let's be honest with one another, right? And some people, they care about good food. They might not spend all the money on outward clothing that people can see. But they eat well. They buy books. You know, they're different. Like among, Hakka, uh, among Chin people, they say Falam people like drinking, they said zoo, and the Tidian people like voxa, that's what they said. <laughs> that's what they said, okay. When I was in Hakka, that's what they, they cracked jokes about. But the uh, Hakka ladies, they like to look pretty. All that they have will be spent on their clothing. Let's not do that. When you look at the posts from our like ministers, okay, other youngsters, I, I don't want to say that because you guys are... Young sir, I know everybody likes to look good and cool. I know about my son. He cares so much about his shoes, what shoes he wears. I said, who cares? His mom, his sister, mm, you're so cheap. But I said, don't say that. That's his passion. Let him have some fun. I'm not I'm out buying what I can. And so like Nike, and then they're going to show up in the picture, right? Only Nike. Uh, what brand? I don't know. Or oh, Jordan. Okay, I don't know for the ladies, but for guys. Okay, in my class... My first class, in the second class, this one dude, I made them introduce themselves, introduce their friend to us. They interview their friend. And you go, oh, this is my friend. His name is, he's an African-American. Uh, his favorite thing is shoe. He likes expensive shoe. I look at him here. He wear this red, huge, nice shoe. But I didn't see the brand, like Ton B Red. He was kind of big. And I said, oh, yeah, I can tell. Well, he, pr he was proudly sitting there with his nice shoe. Anyway. Don't spend all your money on your appearance. Amen? If you know how to manage your money, one day you will get rich and you will become wealthy and you will be able to help so many people. If you don't spend it today, after five years, ten years, it's going to add up and at that point, there will be plenty for you to spend on other things that you want. If not, you will be forever broke. You will always be like hand to mouth, hand to mouth for the rest of your life. I don't want that to happen to you. Amen? Yes, we need God to give us miracle. Lord, I need this money, please. But God doesn't want us to live our life, the rest of our life, with financial miracle. When you say miracle, it sounds so cool, right? But miracle means you need something urgently. It's called emergency situation. God doesn't want us to live in emergency situation in terms of finance. He wants to prosper us. He wants us to live under His blessing overflowing blessing that you don't have to worry about finance you have enough for yourself you have more than enough so that you can give to others amen so manage your money okay so แล้วเปเปียนเนาะเนี่ยไม่มาออกจริงเลยชวยแล้วก่อดีเนาะอ่ะตรุษยาเวนละอย่างฉันตาสวยเดินมาสรุปอะสาตรุตตออ่อๆ
ဟုတ်ပါဘယ်ဟောမှာလည်းပြီးရေဂျိုးနဲ့ထမင်းပဲစားမယ်ဒါပေမဲ့အလဆုံးနှောက်ဆုံးဖက်ရှင်ချိန
really, when you go to college, you can start thinking about that. I like to say that in love. And I, I know like in here, you work and you can still go to college with a baby and with husband or wife. But it's so much harder. If you, you have your whole life right in front of you. If you want to study more, you want to explore, you want to gain more experience with people, skill, volunteering opportunity, work opportunity, I would say don't think about relationship in high school. You can start thinking about that in college. After you graduate, you can get married. Chin people, I think it's our culture, Chin people, because we grew up in the mountain. After you finish 10th standard, there is nothing else to do. You just go to the farm and do farming. So there is no more steps. So you just get married. I understand that, but it's not here. This is America. This is not Zogam, right? This is not Kamtungam. <laughs> amen? Wang Pi say amen. So let's watch out for him. <laughs> I'm saying that in love, okay? And then when you are more mature, you are more mature in the faith. You know how to deal with difficult issues so that somebody is not pissed all the time in that relationship. You are more stable in your character. In college, you guys both have college education. And then after that, it's good to get married. Both of you are kind of mature, you know, to overcome some challenges in Relationship that all relationship has some kind of challenges. You have all, also this wisdom and maturity to guide your children when the children come along. So I really want to say that for years, but actually I should have said only about education, but let me give you that as a bonus, okay? So thank you very much. Let's go back to our main scripture. The Bible says we are God's workmanship. You are wonderfully and beautifully made. Like a cell phone, we praise iPhone XS and what else? What is the latest iPhone X? That's the latest, isn't it? Okay, so it's so good. It's so cool. Everybody want it. But you're cooler than that. Amen. God has deposited gifts in you. Explore them. Ask the Lord. It is good to know that that gift early on. Sometimes we just explore in like my college student, some students, they don't have their major yet, exploratory. There are a few, but mostly they already picked their major. They already have some passion for that, I think. So it's good to know early on, but you have to ask the Lord. Sometimes you already know. Some people, the Lord already spoke to them early on. One day I want to become a doctor, or I want to become a preacher, or a musician. You already know your gifts. Some people, you don't know it yet. It's not visible. Don't worry. We have different, different path to go. Just ask the Lord, Lord, what is my gift? What, what route should I pursue? Because you don't want to waste your time. And then thank the Lord that he has already prepared good works for you. When you pursue that and when you fulfill those works, his perfect will, God's going to give you a thumbs up and say, very good. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. It is so good to worship our God. It is so good to walk with him and to pursue his love. Hallelujah. There is no sorrow. There is no defeat. There is no sadness. It's always victory, overcoming challenges. And he promotes us year by year by year as we faithfully follow his call. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Thank you very much.